welcome back to the third and new and improved best episode part of the DMZ America podcast for May 31st, 2023. Ted Rawl from the left. Scott Stannis from the right. So we're talking about another war raging in America, raging across the continent. Uh, the war on gay has gotten to be absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. You can't say gay in Florida, apparently, which is weird. So I was That's there. kind of gay. It's very gay. <laughs> and I was there a couple gay. weeks ago and I just kept saying gay because I just, I'm, you know, I'm a rebel. Um, one of the most glaring examples of it is uh, Target. I mean, I knew that the, that the, the gay movement had won when Walgreens had like, you know, uh, uh, gay pride tchotchke shit for sale near the checkout. Right. Mm-hmm. Um I, f- I figure, yeah, you know, if anyone thought that they could win this, it's over. Well, apparently it's never over until it's over. It's sort of like the um, Civil War when you have these assholes who wave the Confederate flag. Um, Target has had to cut back on the amount. It's a weird response, by the way, but they had um, the gay pride merchandise. They had it in front. They got some complaints. They moved it in the back. They got some even more complaints and got some of the people who work there being screamed at by some MAGA asshole. Um and so they've cut back on the amount of gay pride stuff they sell, which again is absurd. And but the war on gay now, apparently this is this is a real thing, Ted. And I mean, you live in New York City, you probably don't see it nearly as much as I see here. But in the rhetoric and the uh, it's just so fucking stupid. Here's my take. You're going to, I know I'm supposed to be coming from the right. I'm supposed to, you know, culture war. Woohoo. I hate the fucking culture war with a passion. It's stupid for me. I, I, I really am much more libertarian on these types of issues. If you're gay, if you're two consenting adults, three consenting adults, a bunch of consenting adults, you know what? I don't care if you want to, if you know you you were born a dude, but you want to dress as a chick, that's your. I don't care. Do it. Uh, don't expect me to either like it or hate it. I I'm ambivalent. It's just like you know you 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 be you. You do you. Um, so this whole culture war stuff now that um, guys like um, oh shoot um uh, uh Desantis is one you know where you know declaring that Florida is where woke goes to die. I mean, it just makes me cringe. And there, and by the way, as a someone who has mentioned many times on this podcast, how much I love politics, good politics, smart mm-hmm. politics, when more, most important of all, winning politics, culture war stuff never wins for the Republicans, except for some like, you know, some cotton growing dipshit corner of Georgia. You know, I mean, it just does doesn't. It, does it? I mean, does it not? Do you mean like? Does it not win for Republicans against Democrats or do you mean it doesn't win? I mean, I do. I would say it does work for certain Republicans against other Republicans Mm. in primary battles. Yeah. And then they lose and they lose in shocking places where they should not be losing. Like Georgia. Yeah, precisely. Um, I'm trying to think. I was just reading. I was in Tennessee, uh, other seats like it where you just had this hateful, spiteful, uh, you know, anti-gay misogynist view of war of the world. And they lost because why, nobody so the lost. question is, why does it lose? I mean, does it lose? Do you think Scott, because people are genuinely offended, voters are offended and they think it's disgusting. Uh, they're anti-homophobia or do you think it's because it just seems they don't care that much about these issues and what, however they feel about mm. gay people, they don't think it really affects them the way that, say, economic issues affect them. I'm looking at the, through this through you know gauze of my own making, so it's going to be a little skewed. I like to think that that loses because nobody likes an angry person. I mean, DeSantis is not climbing the polls because he just seems pissed off and angry. And yeah, there's a lot of angry old white guys out there. Believe me, <laughs> um, and they're going to vote. For for this stuff and it does and they come out and they fucking vote there's nothing going to keep them away from the polls mm-hmm. uh the problem is they're they're in in general they're a small number of the general population that's why it loses it doesn't appeal to a broad swatch like look at look at abortion i mean americans don't nobody no serious person likes abortion 
but do you want it to be available? That's where oh, the fuck. Discuss- Are you saying I should cancel that abortion party I have scheduled for this weekend? Yeah. yeah <laughs> yes, where all the people from Alabama come up. Fita Falooza. <laughs> oh, God. God. <laughs> like, you, uh, uh, dibs on the placenta. But I don't think, but 75% of Americans wanted to have access to it. They didn't want late term abortions because they're disgusting. Um, but they did want some access. And I think Americans generally, generally skew libertarian, small L libertarian, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, leave me the fuck alone. If I want to, you know, don't tell me what books I, I mean, even people on the right are aghast at book banning. You know, and what these people who got themselves elected, the MAGA people who got themselves elected in conservative states are now doing things like just cutting funding, zero fund uh, funding for libraries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're against books, just books, not not even specific ones, just, you know, books. Um, books. That runs very much, very contrary to, um, I, I think, the the core of the American values, and they go unspoken oftentimes. But for well, the, the most abortion part, thing for sure, no doubt. Yeah, abortion's yeah, a think- loser for Republicans. Trump has been very clear. He said that in public and in private. Um, he it makes him nervous. The movement of the party to basically try to ban abortion nationally. Uh, even Congress possibly passing a yeah. law that would ban it on the federal level. Gee, what could have prevented that, Ted? If the Democrats had, oh, what's the word? Done their fucking work. That's right. true. And yeah, no. uh, yeah. I will point people who deny it to a 2009 article that appeared uh, when Obama was asked about it when he was a new president and he had a supermajority in the House of Representatives veto proof, not that he would have vetoed his own thing but uh he it was filibuster proof and he's in the, sorry in the senate and he said that he would um he didn't think that uh legalizing abortion at the federal level was a priority for the democratic party so therefore wah, wah. sad trombone <laughs> yep that's right <laughs> wah, wah, wah. yeah so they didn't want to do that and like yeah here we are i mean so getting back to look i do think we need to tease this out a little bit Um, There was a very, I think there's sort of a difference between, I think most Americans, and I would say, including conservative voters, are pretty okay with garden variety lesbians and gays, you know, chicks and chicks, guys and guys hanging together, getting married, having kids even. Um, But the trans thing has really caught, has moved very, very quickly um, to the point where it is not at all, you know, there was a, um, an actress, I forget her name, um, but anyway, she was reacting to the, the story that you mentioned, Scott, about Target moving their pride displays to the back of their stores. And she expressed anger on behalf of her seven-year-old, seven-year-old intersex child who oh, was goodness. upset about this. And uh, look, I don't think you have to be a transphobic right-wing asshole to ask yourself, how does a seven-year-old know their intersex at all? And how did, and how come this didn't ever happen before? And how come now, if you go to a party of on the Upper West Side of Manhattan or in Berkeley or in uh, in in West Palm Beach, you're going or or you know or in the Hollywood Hills you are likely to hear people who say that they have very, very young children who are trans. I don't think you have to be a Bible thumping nut to think that's strange. And I think it's, it's causing a lot of people to be disconcerted. And that's like providing a space for assholes like DeSantis to, uh, you know, pass these anti-grooming laws and say that like, uh, students under third grade shouldn't, or sixth grade, or whatever it is, shouldn't hear any re- reference whatsoever to sexual orientation or gender identity. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think. Oh yeah. I think the trans yeah. things, it, because here's the thing. Do you the, think people the, have the gay struggle has been much slower? I mean, you think about a book like uh, Revolutionary Road that came out, uh, Richard Yates. I think that came out in the '60s, and it still talked about like how hard it was for a closeted 
gay guy who is married to sort of find his truth. And then ultimately, I don't think it's giving any way, thing away to say that he, the character commits suicide. And then, you know, really the acceptance didn't really hit, I'd say, until Biden, right, like sort of accidentally said that he was in favor of gay marriage. And then within a year, the Supreme Court had legalized it. Um, that's half a century but you'd say that I'd say that that struggle really goes back hundreds of years. Whereas um, if you think about where trans Americans were even 15 years ago, they were nowhere, no how at all. And now they're, 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 they're on NPR, they're on, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're on city councils, they're, uh, they're, they're award-winning actors, um, and, which is all great, but it's happened very, very quickly. And I think it, come, it comes as a shock. I mean, why should they wait? It's great. But I think it comes as a shock politically to cis white people. Well, uh, the fact that trans people are being painted as groomers and child molesters and all this stuff that simply isn't true. I mean, it's, uh, by any measure. But there are some uh, problems like this, like this, like the trans women in, in sports, for example. Oh, yeah, I have. A, and I have an issue with that. We've mentioned that on this before that I think mm -hmm. if you if you're if you're born male, you cannot you know, compete in female sports, period. Our species is built this. You know, we're built differently. But do you think, I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it, um, that people, especially on the right, have conflated trans policy with gay policy? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think, and frankly, it's been easy for them to do so because of the way um, the community has lumped themselves all in together. And, you know, I'm not sure they were wrong in the, in the quest for solidarity, but now we have this incredibly awkward and ugly acronym LGBTQIA+. Um, you know, uh, that where they're yeah, all I wish they could together. shorten that. I wish they could shorten that. It just seems sort of silly to have to spell out a word that is well, my, my favorite much. part is the fact that the asexuals are part of it. Um, you know, sorry, I, I'm just gonna say with no standing whatsoever here, asexuals aren't part of the game. See, the thing is, when you're asexual, you don't have a sexual orientation, you're not part of it. So, you know, it's like you, it's like sort of saying, well, what kind of cat is a beagle? It's not a cat. So therefore it's not part of the cat lifestyle. And so like the, so <laughs> although I love beagles, but they're not cats. And so like asexual people, they're not sexual. So they, it's like sort of, it's sort of like me saying, well, I'm the kind of football fan who doesn't have any favorite team because I don't follow sports. That's stupid. When the subject of football comes up, I should just be quiet or say, I don't watch football. You know, there's no asexual activism is stupid. No one's ever discriminated anyone for being against anyone for being asexual. No one's ever yeah. been like, what? You're not horny for anyone? We hate you. We won't hire you. That's never happened ever. I'm trying to think. No, it probably wouldn't. Like, why would it? You're just, <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. It's just asexual one is like nothing. Like, you don't, like, sorry, it's like everybody gets a prize these days. Like, no. So I would kick them out. <laughs> so LGBTQI plus. <laughs> Leave it at that. Well, why not? And, and okay, you can just say gay. I mean, if, if that, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. People know what you mean. Um, True. True. It's a, it's a broad, can have a broad definition. Um, I, it, I'm with you on the trans issue uh, in terms of, like you said, you have my seven and a half year old. I mean, that that's nuts. And that plays into the, and that plays into the rights argument that they're, we're sexualizing children. Um, well, we, in are, many ways, we are sexualizing we are, children. We, we and, always have. And lots of straight children too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the, um, yeah, well, I could go off on my tangent on that, but um, we'll say that for another podcast. Um so with Target, I mean, first of all, you know, so let me get this straight, what you just said, Ted, that that for the most part, especially MAGA types, but not just, and people who lean right, who lean um, culturally conservative, are conflating the trans movement with the gay movement. Because- I think that's right. And I think what's okay, really okay. bugging them, maybe, I mean, like, it's sort of like, it's first of all, I'm going to just put it out there that most it, it's like when 
gay aware when the awareness that how do I put this not gay awareness is not a, a good term but when straight people became aware that they all knew not one but many gay or and lesbian people when that became evident like oh you know it's like Cal it's like Calgon I'm soaking in it they're everywhere and I'm friends with them and I work with them and they're great and they've never done anything wrong and I like them just fine and they're just like me then that like that that's what made all the difference right when so many gays and lesbians came out that you know that straight america was just like all right this is fine whatever i don't know what we were worried about very few americans know any trans americans the num their no their numbers are very low um and then a lot of it is disconcerting like for example you know i mean there is something inherently disconcerting about, you know, Bruce Jenner having become Caitlyn Jenner. There's something disconcerting and basically becoming a really ugly chick. Um, and, or like conversely, there's something <laughs> disconcerting about Dylan Mulvaney, who's also a trans woman, but is, is cute. And, and it's like, that's also disconcerting because you're like, biologically, this person was born male. And so, like, I, I think it's a little freaky for a lot of people, and they don't have familiarity. This is a world that they see on television and in podcasts and on Twitter. They don't see it in their real life. And I've had this argument with lots of people, oh, I know lots of trans people. It's like, most people don't. They just don't. I mean, think about our profession, Scott. I mean, even editorial cartooning, how many trans cartoonists have there ever been? None, ever. None, yeah. And, um, you know, either way, right? How many intersex cartoonists have there been? None. Who ever even heard of like gender fluidity until 10 years ago? No one. So this is very, this is a lot of radical change that is not like, I got to say, like the gay community was far smarter about educating the straight America than the trans community has been. Trans community has been has been much more like, like if you look trans women are the same exact people as women if you don't and they can use the women's bathroom and, and play in women's sports and if you don't like it you're tra you're a transphobic piece of shit fascist asshole um and you don't think that we're real people and it's like well i mean you can make that argument but all you're doing is like making people say okay fuck you bye go away okay <laughs> I, I mean, I, just, I don't know what to, I, I agree with everything you have said, and I don't know what else to say. And I, I, I know that anyone who's listening to this podcast knows where this is coming from, too. And that's it, it's not coming from aggression and hate or just not at it's, all it's coming from questions coming from I don't want affection. It's coming from, you know, so. Um, but I do believe it. You may have actually hit the nail on the head and that it's gone awfully fast and it's kind of freaking people out. Yeah. Um, it's and, I th I, and I think there needs to be, honestly, trans organizers and outreach people uh, as part of the political movement kind of need to hold everybody's hands and walk them through. Here's what's what. Here's who we are. Here's what we're about. Get to know us, um, you know, and and like but instead they like, for example, they're like, oh, by the way, you now have a prefix. You're a cis. And you're like, what's a cis? You know, you're a cis. And it's kind of like coming from people who want to be respected for who they are and how they identify. It's hypocritical to tell other people how they should be called. Mm. Okay. All On right. that note, where can we see everything Ted or hear everything Ted as well? You could go to, uh, so my uh, show on uh, Sputnik radio is uh, obviously on, you go to just go to Sput sputniknews.com. You can listen Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 Eastern, 12 noon Eastern time, or you can just go to Rumble and you don't have to listen live. Uh, they archive them so you can listen to them uh, whenever you want, whenever it's convenient. And there's also a comments um, thread that you can contribute to. You can go to whowhatwhy.org. That cartoon of mine runs on Saturday. Uh, on occasion, I'm in the Wall Street Journal. And I'm at gocomics.com slash Ted Rawl. And I'm going to leave it at that for today. Well, but the most important thing of all, because we know they're listening, is our friends over at Center Clip.
Oh, that's true. Which, which Ted and I are both post for it. Um, it's like mini podcasts. They are 30 seconds to no longer than five minutes. That's just uh, different creators from various parts of the political spectrum uh, commenting on uh, different different stuff. And it's, it's, it's really fascinating. I love my, it's really weird walking through my house and hearing Ted Rawls voice because Ted posts about 13 times a day. Oh, no. So that's okay. 12. I represent um, that argument. You really do. It's yeah. you're you're no, you're a machine. You're awesome. I did listen. I, I, I say this with all jealousy. <laughs> I wish I was that prolific, uh, but it's center clips. So, so do yourself a favor, download the app and give it a listen. Um, you can see my work at, uh, uh, gocomics.com slash Scott Stantis or gocomics.com and see slash prickly city and see my comic strip. You can go to the Chicago Tribune and see a gallery of the work I do for them. Um, so that's uh, that uh, that just about covers it. So, uh, yeah, this is fun. Ted, we did we disagreed without being disagreeable, and isn't that a beautiful thing? It is actually a beautiful thing. It is actually, I really love talking to Ted because he's always been fascinating. He challenges me every time, which is fantastic. So, it's uh, it's pretty groovy, man. All right, Scott. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always. <laughs> All right. Let's well stay tuned. We'll be back next week unless something big happens. Thank you very much for listening to the DMZ America podcast. Bonjour. Arrivederci. <laughs>